Beth Van Dyne from Texas's congressional 24th district, now Congresswoman elect Van Dyne. That's a lot. What? That's a, you have a brand new title now, Congresswoman elect. Congratulations on I winning do. your race. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It was a hard fought, fought battle, as you know. You know, the millions of dollars that were being poured in from places like California, New York, DC, Bloomberg got involved in the race. Nancy Pelosi's House Majority Pact, DCCC. You know, two years ago when Kenny Marchant uh, uh, ran and won, was successful at his reelection bid, he barely won with over 50 percent of the votes. Mm. And uh, his Democrat opponent at that time spent about $100,000. We've seen almost $16 million, um spent wow. by the Democrats to win this race, this 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 cycle. Wow. And the fact is, is that we worked. We worked our tails off and had a strong message, had a great ground game. And I've said before, you know, I may be outspent, but I'm not going to be outworked. Right. And our team definitely worked it. That's that's wonderful. And and you did. You were out there. I saw I have to mention your the the photo of the breakfast that you had uh, the day after the election. It was breakfast of champions. You had a waffle as big as your head and some scrambled eggs. I only saw one piece of bacon, though. So I'm glad that that photo bacon, came out. At, you, <laughs> I ate the entire waffle. <laughs> and you and you deserved it too. breakfast of champions that what does it say to you that you had so and I mentioned how district level polling was so awful going into this also for texas uh whether you were looking at cook or whether you were looking at some of the i know the averages were even thrown what does that say to you though about all of the promises and threats of a blue wave yet it did not materialize nor did the threat that oh well texas is going to turn blue from democrats bloomberg i think i know he spent a lot of money in in the race uh that you that you were in in texas's 24th congressional district millions of dollars and uh along with like act blue and some others that, but they didn't turn Texas blue. They didn't even gain any grounds in the state legislature. They definitely lost seats, obviously, as we discussed in the House. What does that tell you about the blue wave and where voters are with the whole identity politics game? Well, I think what you saw is the media even playing into it. I mean, we just kept fighting you know, the media narrative that Democrats were coming in, they were taking over. Mm. And to your point on polling, we we kept being told that we were losing. You know, she came out with a poll uh, um, in, in August, in you know, late July, early August, saying that she was six points ahead. And that wasn't what our polling was showing. Mm. But, you know, I think their messaging was terrible. You know, the idea that they just basically tried to run on the same Democrat in every single position and they did not know their districts. Right. You know, in my race, my opponent had no idea what I stood for or what I did. You could have used all of her attack ads and just taken my name out and put any Republican name in. They ran the same race across the country and voters are not stupid. You know, when 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 you are not talking to them, when you obviously, you know, have are, are allowing D.C. strategists and, 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 and politics, you know, poli uh, political folks to be able to run your campaign in Texas, it doesn't fly. No, it no doesn't matter how many millions of dollars you spend. Now, I know that and I know there's certain things that I, I, I don't want to get into the all the details of it. But I know just as it's funny to me because there people are, are criticizing the president currently for uh, mm -hmm. questioning the ballot counting process, you know, et cetera, what's going on in Michigan and Pennsylvania, and everyone's everyone's calling him a fascist. But I do think it's interesting that your opponent is is contesting, even though, I mean, I was looking at the raw totals that were up on the Secretary of State's website. Let me pull this up again. I mean, there's a significant, uh, there's a significant difference there in the totals by yeah. a couple thousand. And I was looking at it. Yeah, I mean, you, you 166,363 to 161,874. And you even bested her in early voting as well. Uh, and so far, I don't think that she's wanting to concede, which seems uh, just kind of, you know, D class A as we're as we're going into we're trying to wrap up this election cycle. Everybody's so divided. She would do so much just by, you know, showing the decency of, of, of conceding a free and fair election. Texans chose you in this district. So I know that you have. Uh, what is it, freshman orientation to go to, hopefully, yeah. you, you. I mean, you don't have yeah. her showing up too, thinking she's just going to go with you in your backpack to freshman orientation. <laughs> well, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that this race is going to get called very soon. Um, you know, we've been in contact. Tarrant County had some issues with uh, printing 
of ballots. Yeah. And uh, you know, the, the barcodes weren't printed in the right spot for the machines to be able to use, to, to read them. So it has been a painstakingly long process, but we're not, uh, we're not looking at fraud in this case. This was just misprinted ballots that right. the machine didn't read. That so now they're counted. having a hand count yes. in front of, you know, your, your ballot boards and making sure that both Republican and Democrat on that, uh, on that partnership are, are agreeing that those count. Right. So it has been a long process, but we are confident that they're going to call the race and call it before freshman orientation, November 12th. And I want to underscore the Congresswoman elect's point there because, and everybody knows, and I've talked about it, I live in Tarrant County and my son, this was his first election to vote in. His was one of the ballots, according to the people that we were yeah. talking to at Department of Elections that had the barcode because we were following his ballot. He's a college student, uh, doesn't live, uh, is living in, on campus. And we were tracking that and they did count it. And I spoke to numerous people that were saying, yes, they're being hand counted. And I even spoke yeah. to people who were also overseeing the hand counting. And for those people who are unaware, what happens is you have two people, Democrat and Republican, that sit at a table together. And so they they are forced to keep each other fair. And then you have additional observers with that. So it is a very detailed process to ensure fairness and truth. And they get counted. So this, as as Congresswoman-elect Van Dyne said, this is not an issue of fraud. It's just make. It's just get, they they had to take those barcode, the ones with the erroneous or the messed up barcodes, and they they do count them. So this is not like Michigan or Pennsylvania or anywhere else uh, or any of that other spin. Uh, last uh, question for you. I know that you got to get going, and we appreciate your time uh, with us today too. Are, are you? I can imagine that you're very much looking forward to freshman orientation, getting in, getting started, what are you most eager to begin with as you as you start your congressional term? Well, I'll tell you, this has been an overwhelming um, success. If you look at the races across the country, we've got a great freshman team coming in. And, you know, I know um, almost all the members of the, of the freshman team, and uh, I know all the members of the freshman team that are coming in. Kevin Bray is referring to us as the uh, the Texas six-pack, right? The new, the new yes. members. Um, you know, we, as you mentioned, we were able to, to uh, keep the house uh, in Texas, which everybody ca- talked about being able to be overturned. But we have our, our hands are going to be full right now. Um, we have a lot to come over with the pandemic and what it's done to our economy. And when I was mayor, you know, one of my number one focuses was making sure that we had not only retained the businesses that we had, but that we kept growing. And during the time that I was mayor, you know, we added 40,000 new jobs to the city. We had $3 billion of investment, uh, private investment Mm -hmm. in the city. And those are things that we're going to have to look at and start concentrating as how to get those jobs back, how to help the small businesses that most need it right now, get the immediate need that they need to be able to open up their doors. Let's get the schools open. And then, you know, we're also going to have to look at health care. Um, the Democrats have, have had that trumpet for the last two cycles. It has a failure this time because I think Republicans got out in front of it. But let's face it, we need to come up with a bill that decreases cost, that increases access and increases quality of health care for all Americans. Absolutely. That's uh, Congresswoman-elect Beth Van Dyne, former mayor of Irving, Texas, from mayor to Congress. Congratulations again on your race. And I know that for the any kind of legal battle or anything, if there's to be if it's to be funded by the Act Blue people or Bloomberg, where can people go uh, to 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 get involved in that on your behalf? Um, they can go to Beth for Texas dot com. And we'll definitely have instructions on our website. So Beth4Texas.com. There you go. Congresswoman-elect Van Dyne, always a pleasure. Congratulations again. And we look forward to seeing what you do. 